For AIOs, there is a very simple rule. Bigger means better. And for myself, I am all for bigger. Heck, just look at my editing rig. A 420 RAD, which is 60 millimeters thick. And I even tried to squeeze in another 360, but unfortunately for my own sick fetish, it, it just didn't fit. Now, Arctic knows this rule, which is why all of their liquid freezer AIOs are coming with a 38 millimeter thick RAD instead of the usual 27 that most other companies provide. However, thickness is not everything. And let's not lie to ourselves, size does matter too. Meet the Liquid Freezer 420 ARGB, the biggest, thickest, most insane out of the box water cooler that you can get right now. With a weird ass box, Arctix 420mm AIO exists in three different versions the ARGB that we are looking at right now, a RGB version, which is basically the same thing except for four pin controllable RGB connectors on the fans instead of three pin ARGB ones and that the fact that you cannot longer create the rainbow poop unicorn thing but other than that it's the same thing. And the original know nothing version featuring the regular P14 fans. Performance wise there will be a difference because just like P12s and, and P12 ARGBs, the P14 and P14 ARGBs do not perform exactly alike. Unfortunately, I do not have a Liquid Freezer 420 non-RGB, but what I do have is a bunch of imagination thanks to letting my baby head hit the floor a bunch of times when I was a kid. Comparison will then follow later. Installing the AIO is exactly as it was for every other Liquid Freezer. First, we need to place the two rails onto the bottom side of the water block with the ends pointing away from the center but the edges of each rail pointing up and then screw them down. Then for LGA 1700 we need to take the provided back plate with the central part sticking up, shoving the little screw holders into the most outer holes and then securing them on the other side with the rubber o-ring. After positioning the back plate behind your motherboard we can take the Intel standoffs and screw them in. Over an AMD side we first need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the spacers. From there we need to position the AMD mounting clips on top of everything the one with the rounded off edges need to be at the top and the one with the sharper edges at the bottom. And then in case that you're using an AM4 or AM5 CPU, which is basically every Ryzen still in usage, make sure to use the upper holes as this pushes everything slightly down and can greatly increase the AIO's performance. And then screw them down. Now on both platforms, squeeze some of that thermal paste onto your CPU, slap that water block on it and then screw the sucker down. One of the most amazing mini features about the Arctic Wicked Freezer lineup is that they made sure to minimize cabling to the fullest extent possible. To get the AIO running, all you need to do is install the two cables coming out of the water block the 3-pin ARGB for light and the 4-pin PVM for fan speed. From there you don't need to do anything. Arctic made sure to route both wires through the 450mm long tubes where both cables exit the radiator and then immediately go into the fans. Everything nicely secured and tightened up using zip ties. Minimal overhang, minimal cable cluster, truly amazing. To quickly finish off the about section, in case you go for the ARGB version, you will get 1900 RPM fans pushing 68.9 CFM at two millimeters of H2O, all controllable via your motherboard software. And for the all black version, you will get 2000 RPM quick ones pushing 72.8 CFM at 2.4 millimeters of H2O. But it's not really about the fans. Probably the biggest contributor to the LF2 series performance is the radiator. The 420mm Big Red is actually 38mm thick, making it one of the thickest available in an AIO package. And as a little bonus, the Millennium Falcon that Arctic calls Waterblock has a tiny whiny thing on there that blasts some air onto the VRM heatsinks. You may not need it, or I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't, but it definitely helps. And then as a last info, you can mount this thing on top of an LGA 1712 every 1150, 2011 and 2066 socket for Team Inter. And for Team Red, it's AM5 and AM4. Now before we proceed, if you were to decide to go for this nuclear power plant cooler, keep in mind that having socket support does not mean that this thing will fit in. It's a 420 Red. And if you were to add up the little part where the tubes go in and out, and the bottom part, we are looking at 458 millimeters. So before you make any purchase, check if your case has at least 470 millimeters in the front or top. And I'm not talking about like the outer size. You want to have more than, let's say, at least 458 on the spot where it needs to go. Otherwise, it will just not get in. Okay, with everything covered, 
Let's get to the benchmarks. While letting all of the fans spin at 100% of their max speed, we witness the epitome of stoicism that makes up the upper range of Arctic Liquid Freezer lineup. At 41.9 degrees C above ambient, the 420 version managed to outperform its 280 counter version by a whopping 0.1 degrees C. Absolutely staggering. Now we are pushing 130 watts through the socket for our CPU cooler review. And well, that's just not enough to create a real difference. But this changes once you push out the wattage. Take our Ryzen 7000 cooling videos, for example. For the 7950X, the difference between a LF280 and a LF220 are pretty substantial. Our 3900X, however, just doesn't really seem to care. That being said, if there is one thing to take from this graph, then that the Liquid Freezer 420 ARGB is the absolute beefiest, fattest, best performing AIO there is right now. And after performing some of our magic voodoo stuff, the Liquid Freezer 420 non-RGB turned out to be exactly the same. On the noise to performance side, however, we start to see why a 420 could make sense. Thanks to the additional red size and fans, both 420 versions were able to keep the noise to performance ratio significantly lower compared to any other versions once we turned down the speed. And just to give you some sort of comparison, whilst letting the Liquid Freezer 420's fans spin at 30% fan speed, which is already at noise floor in our room, at that point, the Nokia NHD15 hasn't even been able to start playing the game at all. We would need to heat the back of the red with a propane torch to get them to perform somewhat the same. Absolutely incredible. So where does this leave us? Well, this thing is a monster. No doubt there. I have not seen anything performing as exceptionally well as this thing. The max performance is not comparable to anything else and thanks to its ridiculous size the noise to performance ratio will be unbeaten for quite some time. That being said, do you need this? Well for myself I will always try to do whatever I can to keep the noise as low as possible no matter the load. So if that's your goal, of course, there will be nothing better than this beefiest fattest cooler. The other use case would be a top-of-the-line CPU, 7950X, 3900K. If you use one of those, this thing makes absolute sense. There are only a few coolers capable of cooling these pieces at all, and something like this will make that experience somewhat less suicidal. However, let's say you want to go with a 13700K, a 7700X. Well, of course, you will get better performance, but to be honest, you will not feel the slightest difference compared to a 280 version or a 360 version. You just won't. That thing is more than good enough to handle the job. So yes, we do absolutely recommend this cooler. Of course we do. Just keep in mind that if you don't have the hardest hardware out there, this will basically be overkill. You, it will be overkill by a huge margin. On a side note, yes, the VRM fan is still there. The Millennium Falcon is still present and it is still spitting some air onto the VRM heatsinks. And no, you don't need it, but hey, it helps. It gets you a couple of degrees as we've seen in the Liquid Freezer 360 review. I don't want to call it, call it a gimmick, but assuming that you have a decent case and uh, your fans are not uh, like imaginary friends, you really don't need it. But okay, this should be it for the Liquid Freezer 420 and 420 ARGB. At this point, a huge thank you to Arctic for sending it over, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 ARGB. Also an amazing AIO. Not as good as the 420, but you know, almost. On a side note, we also have channel memberships, and if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy a tiny house. But not for me, but for the Liquid Fusa 420. Not that I don't want it here, it's just too big and it wants to move out. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.